we got so lucky. Turns out the, the best restaurant in Maryland was in Annapolis, and that was only 30 minutes from the campground. So off we went. So yeah, man, the scenery was beautiful, but this is what it was all about. I came for the lobster, I came for the scallops, I like Maria here. <laughs> Trish had her crab cakes, we're gonna make those out in the back here at the end of this episode, you're gonna love it. And me, I couldn't wait for this. I was such a mess at the end of this, and it was so worth it. You gotta go to Maryland, man. So we took a, a little bit more time, took in some sights, Trish decided to play a bit, I waited around, Then for my birthday, we had some of the best food St. Augustine had to offer. And how lucky am I? My last evening birthday celebration even included a dinner show. Very fast. As a kid that eats a meal, I'm a Oreo versus so the next day I had a couple of more stops to make and so did Trish and that was it. The summer was over as fast as it started so we packed up, headed home and already started thinking about how we can recreate some of our favorites from the trip. We'll see you back. Hey guys, well, listen, we just got back from our camping trip. Uh, we had a big three part series. I hope you guys like that. If not, check it out on Facebook and YouTube. We went to, uh, good God, where did we go? Fort DeSoto, Savannah. Space Center, Savannah, Jacksonville, Columbia, Williamsburg, Washington, where I ditched her for the 4th of July, mm -hmm. and then Annapolis. And on the way back, we hit uh, St. Augustine. Holy crap. And we ate everywhere, man. So we were, we were talking, we're like, well, what are our favorites? So here's what we came up with. My favorites of all the places that we ate out there were, uh, uh, the, we had these smoked wings in Savannah. Couldn't even, uh, couldn't even believe it. So come here, we're doing our best. To recreate that recipe, how's that looking? Oh. <laughs> hey, get on in there and have a look. Look at that, man. We uh, try to figure out our own rub. And, whew, that looks good. So those are almost done. And then I also loved in uh, Masons. Oh, in Annapolis, where else are you gonna find a better one of that? Look at this, lobster rolls, baby. All three kinds, man. We're gonna do uh, Maine, New England. And what is it? Connecticut, Cincinnati, Saskatoon. What is it? Connecticut. <laughs> we've got we've got our jumbo lump uh, uh, crab balls ready that we made just a little bit earlier, guys. Here's how we did it. Oh, and by the way, here's how we tossed those wings and got those ready for the smoker, too. <laughs> so we've got the lobster ready, the crab cakes. What else? <laughs> um, wings were yours. So the wings were mine, and you absolutely hash, love corn the hash. corned beef. I'm like, how's she, how she missing that? So we we're going to try and make our own corned beef hash. So guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use our uh, Blackstone tailgater, because one side can have the uh, burner. That's where we'll do our uh, our, uh, our uh, poached eggs. We'll do poached eggs with corned beef and hash. And over here, just to get the ball rolling, let's get our buns toasted. Guys, make sure, if you're going to do authentic uh, lobster rolls, any style, any kind, Make sure you clarify butter or use ghee. Look in here, okay? Now this is, the milk fat's taken out, man. Oh, 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 look at that, this is beautiful. Hey, they'll tell you, a good lobster roll, all about the bun. We got those going, so now we have to get our crab going. We need a little bit of oil, like that. Woo! So you wanna form the crab cakes in about six to eight ounce portions, or four if you're on a budget, or two if you're really on a budget, or just have Pollock if you're, there's no budget. <laughs> I know what that feels like, man. Here we go. Give those a nice little press, just like that. You wanna get that sear going. God, that's a nice song, isn't it? 
my favorite tune. There we go. Nice. And there. Now we're also, because it takes a little extra time to cook, going to get our potatoes rocking and rolling over here. Oh, yeah. For our corned beef hash. Let's get all of this stuff in. It's a hash, so you don't have to be pretty. There we go. All right, so for corned beef hash, we need corned beef. So uh, it's the day before we're shooting the big corned beef episode. But, so uh, here's what we did. We fired this guy up. It's running a little hot right now, but that's okay. Uh, it'll put a bit of a sear on it. So we will toss another chunk of wood in there. There we go. And then close it off just a little and close that damper off just a bit. All right. That'll drop the temperature down a little. Woo! There we go. Now, always do fat cap up so the fat renders down. We've got our corned beef here. Slap that on. There we go. We're going to put that guy right there. That'll take about four hours. Easy peasy. All right, so our corned beef is ready. We've got our, our little lights out here. It's got pretty late. It takes a while. Here we go. Get our spatula. And there we go. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty. So this is what we'll use for our corned beef hash in tomorrow's shoot. That's pretty cool. <laughs> God, that's pretty. Love it. It's fun here, guys. Look at this. This is a full 17 inches of cold rolled steel. Blackstone really does this right, man. We're going to spread this out. Let this get a nice sear going. Just like that. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and check these. Oh, that's pretty. We don't want these to burn, so we're going to give them a flip and be careful. We'll turn that temperature down. The fun's on. Uh, now, cool thing about these, this is a dual burner, so if I'm not using one side, I just click off the other. Blackstone's got, Blackstone's got a ton of different sizes to choose from, you guys. Uh, of course, we get to try them all. Uh, they got the 36 inch, if you got a bigger crowd you're cooking for. They got the 28 inch, which I'm getting ready to do an unboxing for soon. This is our 22 inch that started out exclusively on HSN, and now is available in a few different uh, spots around the country. Uh, I think they're also coming out with a 50 inch or something if you have like 8,000 people that you have to cook for for some reason. Oh, by the way, notice how, how black and beautiful that surface is. Guys, I did a little video yesterday about how to rescue your blackstone. You're gonna leave your grills out in the elements. There's no doubt, all right? And the problem with that is, no matter how well you cover them, you can still have problems with the weather getting to it. Out here in Florida, guys, it doesn't get any worse. So have a look at that video, and you're going to see what it took to save one of those grills of ours, man. It was something. So let's go ahead now, do this. That's 100 degrees out here. And let's go. Well, you know what? Good things happen when the rubber gloves come out. <laughs> what was that, a Howie Mandel thing? Get it on in there. We're going to go ahead and put these lobster rolls together. Everybody can breathe a sigh of relief. Okay. Here we go, Roman's confused. So guys, there's three kinds of lobster rolls that they uh, gave us a shot at at Mason's in Annapolis. I'm hoping I'm getting the name right there. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's it, Mason's? That's the place where they uh, somebody took the mirror off our truck. That was fun. Anywho, that's my problem. <laughs> so, guys, what they did was they gave you three choices. They gave you uh, Maine, New England, and Connecticut, or Cincinnati. Yeah. Cincinnati's the chili. Connecticut. We were gone for like three and a half weeks. So Maine is a little bit of mayo, and that's it. It's not swimming in it. It's just a light coating. That's all. New England is the mayo, but also a little bit of green in there. So you got your celery, your green onions, and you're going to put that on a bed of lettuce. And then we're going to do our... Maine? No. Lobster? No. Connecticut. That's actually served with a little bit of, uh, of warm ghee and sauteed in it. So let's go ahead and get that stuff ready. Let's go ahead and do our warm one first. Oh, I lied about the ghee. So for our, whoa, holy cow, man. One of the things that I appreciated about that was how much lobster they put in their lobster rolls. Because I've been to a few places, man. They were really kind of stingy. 
I'm like, this is like a lobster training roll. When I grow up, I want to be, uh, you know, the real lobster roll. But in the meantime, here's a, here's the thing to get you started. These guys, man, when they brought that out, I was like, these are huge. Okay, so guys, all you're gonna do with these is give it a very light saute in butter, just like that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead. You don't want it hot, you just want it warm. So let's go ahead and take it over, and these are as nice and as plain as you can make them. Guys, watch this. And there is a couple of perfect Connecticut lobster rolls. Nice and steamy, the big claws. Look at those babies. Isn't that nice? So let's go ahead now. Well, you know what? Let's, let's flip our crab cakes. It would be such a shame. Such a crab shame. Oh, hey, Trish, come on here and get a look at these. These are cooking up perfect. Look at that. Wow. Oh. Isn't that something? Wow. That's why they're 20 bucks each. So one of our favorites this summer was the lobster roll at Mason's in Annapolis. So uh, I, I don't know how fresh a lobster we're going to get here compared to there, but I've been looking around and, and uh, the grocery stores don't have it, so i got to go to a seafood place. I'll tell you, if we're going to make our favorites, we're going to do it right. So guys, the easiest way to put your lobster rolls together, put your spoon away, put your fork away, get a couple of rubber gloves because I'm telling you, this is just, it's the most delicate, wonderful, lovely, expensive, you don't want to ruin it, crush it, rack it, stab it, nothing. Not many times in your life are you going to have lobster rolls at home, you know what, even out. So if you're going to, if you're going to do it for a treat, I'll tell you, man, just take your time, mix them up nice. Just a little bit of mayo on these guys. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And there is your, make sure that claw goes in there. There's your New England lobster roll. And then if you go up to Maine a little bit, let's go on in here. And we're gonna add that little bit of green in there. Some people say drag it through the garden. Uh, some people just want it on the leaf. The whole nine yards, guys, here we go. All right, watch this. There is your New England style. Now, here's something that's cool about this, you guys. The lobster rolls are fantastic. They look great, they taste great, but I'm not stopping there. Guys, we've got our boy just up the street. This is one of his favorite foods from the trip too, and he can't be here for the shoot. So here's what we're gonna do, you guys. We're gonna send him one of these, because I promised him one, but we're not just gonna walk it down the street. We're gonna send it by drone. Check this out. So guys, uh, we're gonna get rid of these and get them in the fridge because we wanna make sure that we can, yeah, let's get these out of here. We wanna enjoy those in a couple of minutes, there we go. You don't mess around with lobster rolls after you spend the money on that lobster, you know what I'm saying? So now guys, uh, in order to do a proper corned beef hash, you need poached eggs, all right? So I'm gonna give you a little trick. You may be wondering why we're not cracking them just from the egg into the water. Eggs, uh, if you ever notice when you crack them onto a pan or whatever, they can be uh, runny, they can go all over the place. Well, there's a reason for that. There's a lot of moisture in the egg. So if you take a second and take the egg and crack it either into a pan or into a little bit of a sieve or a strainer, that extra moisture that's not actually part of the egg white will run away. And now you're left with just the egg and just the yolk, not the moisture, so you don't get a lot of that big white stuff in the water or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead, come on over here. We're just going to go ahead and pop those right in like that. You see that, you guys? Instead of all the white going everywhere, everything just kind of stays together, hangs out, besides their buddies, want to get to know each other. There we go, and there we go. And in the meantime, let's get our You Gotta Be Kidding Me Crab Cakes. Holy moly, I gotta tell you something. We've been home for a little while, plus we traveled all the way home. It's been, uh, what, two or three weeks since we've actually been in Annapolis? So we've made a point, everywhere we've gone, Oh, you know, I gotta get a couple more seconds on that side. I like the crunch. Okay, every place that we went, 
we made a point of getting some crab cakes, especially when they said Maryland style or Annapolis style or something. Because you know what? Unless you're there and you're eating it, holy moly, because every one of them we order, we're like, that's not even close. Holy cow. Not even close, guys. If you want the best, make that trip. If you're ever in that area, if you're in Maryland, if you're Washington, D.C., and you're a seafood lover, you got it. I wasn't going to do it. I was going to stay at home and just skip it. You got to take that 30 minute drive and go get that authentic Maryland crab experience, all right? And when you go to the restaurants and the stores here, it's a bunch of filler, it's a bunch of mustard, it's a bunch of breadcrumbs. We made ours like they make theirs, all crab, tiny little bit of everything else. This is why this is one of our favorites, guys. Look at this. Oh, holy moly, I gotta do this, I know. Here we go. Check this out, this hurts. <laughs> Look at that. There's not a bunch of filler in there. That is a Maryland style crab cake, man. You wanna try that one? I know this one was your favorite. Ow, 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 mother. Here you go. This one's mine. A little bit of dippity dip dip. Not better than any restaurant we've stopped at since Annapolis. Is it better than Annapolis? No, but man, is that good. Make them yourself at home, guys. That's the real deal. You're gonna love that. All right, so guys, our uh, corned beef hash is just about done here. Everything's got, look at this, nice little brown bits, nice little char, all the potatoes are getting crispy. That's the way we like it. I'll tell you, Chris, uh, Trish is the uh, uh, corned beef and hash expert. Did you say your dad used to make it? Mm -hmm. so everywhere we go. Trish has to try the corned beef and hash. So this is gonna be family size, family style. You can break this up if you want, but we always love this. Uh, get everybody around the table, make a nice big one, and everybody can kind of get their own. Now remember those poached eggs, have a look inside there. If you take a second and separate the moisture from the yolk, then you don't have that crazy dirty water all over the place. So guys, here we go. Corned beef and hash. That was a, an inspiration from the Metro Diner in, where were we, Jacksonville? Yes. Okay, so we'll set that there. We got one more. This was fun. We went to this place in Savannah and we wanted to go to like the, the famous place. You know the lady, right? Savannah, right? You know the lady. I didn't want to go there. I wanted to go to a place that was like that before it was like that. So we found this little neighborhood place and man, they had the best food. They had the best banana pudding. They had the best everything I think I've ever eaten. And they made the most incredible smoked wings. So I said to Trish, the second we get home, man, we gotta try this. So we hit this with a little bit of rub, super simple, you know me, salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of garlic powder, and that was it, you guys. If you wanna hit it with a, a stronger rub or a few more spices, go ahead, but you really don't have to. Let, this, uh, let the wings pick up the flavor of the wood that you're smoking with, the oak, the alder, the hickory, the cherry, the apple, you name it, man. A sweeter wood works great with chicken. If you're doing something a little beefier, then you might wanna go hickory or, uh, or uh, mesquite or something like that. But for me, a little bit of apple or cherry all day long. Look at those things. Isn't that nice? So guys, that was fun. Thanks so much for joining us. We had such a great time on our holiday. These were a few of our favorites. We'd love it in the comment section below if you tell us some of your camp favorites, backyard favorites. We're all about cooking recipes that people love from all over the country. So guys, we'll see you next time on Marks in the Grill. And we'll see you next time on Marks in the Grill, coast to coast on Butter and Toast. Thanks, guys.